Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, it is football season. My two favorite teams, Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks. So today we're gonna be doing peanut brittle. Sorry, can't see the camera without my glasses. But anyways, we're gonna be doing peanut brittle. And it's a great holiday kind of tradition to make Christmas candy. Um, fudge and so on and so forth, which I've made numerous batches already, but I wanted to show you how I do it. It's very simple. It's an easy step process. So the only thing I advise is do not cook with a scarf on. You want nothing hanging around on the stove. Whoops. <laughs> you can leave the hat on. Don't leave your scarf on. Okay. So you don't want nothing hanging around the stove that could catch on fire. But anyways, so, um, Today, you know, we're going to be doing peanut brittle, but I'm not going to be using peanuts. I'm actually going to be using cashews, but in this recipe, you can use any kind of nut you want. Um, I've been making it with peanuts. I have one batch I want to do with uh, peanut brittle that was a request by Miss Carly Rose Taylor. <laughs> she loves my, my uh, cashew brittle. Anyways, um, so I'm going to pause you for a second. And then I'm going to remove the camera so you can see all the ingredients. Okay, so here I have, and you want a nice um, thick bottom pan because you don't want a thin bottom pan because it can burn because you're cooking at very high temperatures. Okay, so you want a nice piece of cookware. Okay, and also do not use just any old ladle in there. If you do not have a wooden spoon, you want to use a high temp, uh, either metal or high temp plastic. Okay, my plastic is a high temp. I use it all the time. It doesn't affect it. You know, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't do anything. It's just it's made for you know high temperatures, so it's okay. Okay. So to start out, um, and this is a larger batch. I can fill up an entire cookie sheet with this, and I break it up. But I'll show you how to do that in a second. You know. So I have three cups of sugar, okay? It may seem like a lot, but it does cook up. And I have one cup of corn syrup. You just put that right in the pan. You don't have to worry about anything. This all goes in. Just like me. Okay, then I'm gonna put in one cup of water okay and then you want to turn your stove on to a medium high you want it to be pretty high okay and make sure you have your candy thermometer ready okay because or you can eyeball it depends how good you are if you eyeball it you want it to be at um, uh, it'll start turning an amber color, okay, which is your softball stage, okay, for um, any kind of candy, okay, because you're, this is all going to be cooked, cooked down, and you'll see it as it starts cooking. So I'm going to pause you for a moment, and then I'm going to assume, because it's going to take a little bit to get this up to temperature. You know, so you don't sit there and watch it. But I'll, I'm going to pause you just a second. Okay, just to let you guys know, so it's starting to get to a, a little different state. It's a little bubbly, you know, it has a while to go. Um, but with this recipe, you do not have to stir yet, you know. You can give it a stir if you want, but it's not necessary. Um, not until you add the peanuts will you need to start stirring okay but you do need to watch it you need to keep your eyes on it you don't want to walk away and now uh, this is very very hot and it's going to get very hot so just be prepared okay um the other thing is you want to um have all your ingredients ready so i have about um two and a half cups of cashews and it's give or take, depends on how much you want to add. You can add more, you can add less, you know. I have um, a tablespoon of baking soda, 
and I have um, a teaspoon of uh, vanilla. Okay. And those go in at the very end after everything is just ready to get done. I'll mix those in. So as you can see, it's coming up to a boil and it's just going to simmer. Okay. And um, I will add, I can actually put my candy thermometer in right now. You know, um, this hooks on the side of the pan. If you don't have one, you should get one. This is really inexpensive. Um, you get any grocery store sells them, you know, for, um, you know, about $7. But anyways, so when it gets to be boiling like this, because I have it on like, so my range goes from low and then one through nine and then high. So I have it on nine. Okay. I'm going to bring it down to like seven. Okay. Then it'll bring it down to still bubbling. Okay. But it's going to sit and, um, not be so, so high, you know, it's going to start cooking itself down. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause you again because it's going to take a little bit and it gets boring watching pots boil on the stove. So I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I just want to show you the different stages. Right now I'm at about 220 degrees, okay? And it hasn't turned, it'll turn like an amber color, okay, when it gets up to the right temperature, okay? Um, a lot of people just do eyeball this, you know, because they're so used to it. But it's pretty clear, but you can really see when it changes to an amber color. And that's when you want to add your peanuts or cashews or mixed nuts, whatever kind of seed you want in there. Okay. And then you got to get it all the way up to 300. I get mine up to 310. Okay. And then I take it off at 310 and I put it in the cookie sheet and, I'm, and I'll show you when I do that. You know, so, but I wanted to show you the different stages right now. You know, so I'm going to pause it again and we'll be right back. Okay, here we are again. So I'm at about 250, 275 right now. And the your, my sugar is actually starting to have a little bit of an amber tone to it. You can see it's not as clear as it was before. You know, I don't know if the camera picks that up. Um, almost to the soft ball stage, just a few more minutes. And then I'm gonna add I'm going to add the uh, peanuts. So, or cashews. You can use peanuts, like I said. You can use any kind of nut, you know. But with this recipe, it's really simple, really easy. It's just you got to move fast, and you're working with candy, working with a high temperature. So you just want to be prepared for that kind of stuff, you know. Okay, so... We're right at the softball stage, and it has a really nice color to it, you know. It could even be a little more amber than this. It's looking really good. I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. And this will, like I said, this will make um, a pretty large batch. Okay. Have your cookie sheet ready. Okay. That is, um, uh, has parchment paper down, not wax paper because it'll melt the wax, obviously, on the paper. Parchment paper or a nonstick uh, pad. Like I use the nonstick pads and they work beautiful. I got them at Costco. Um, reusable and nothing sticks to them and it's absolutely wonderful I love them love them love them you know, so okay so and also when you add your nuts to this one thing I do it bring because the nuts you know are not as hot so that brings the temperature down I actually turn my temperature up okay just a tinge okay because I know I'm gonna be throwing the peanuts in it or the cashews I keep saying peanuts but the cashews Okay, so I'm going to turn this back up a little bit, okay, and it's turning very, really nice amber right now, 
Okay, so I'm right at the beautiful temperature. So I'm gonna pour the, pour the nuts in. And then I'm gonna stir this in and keep this up at temp. I'm gonna take my thermometer out for a minute. And give it a stir and keep it stirring. Because you gotta get it all the way up to the right temperature. And this part here, you don't stop stirring, okay? Once your nuts are in there, once your peanuts or cashews or mixed nuts in there, you keep on stirring, okay? Until you're all the way up to that beautiful temperature of, I do it to 310, you know, usually 305, you know, if I take it off. And then I add in the baking soda and the, um, the vanilla extract. So this is what it will look like, as you can see. And it's just bubbling away. You just got to keep an eye on it. I'm going to put the thermometer in there and check the temperature. Right now. And it mellows out too. Once you're, once the peanut's in there and it gets up to, back up to temperature, it's a lot more smooth. You know, when I first put it in, it, was, it got thick because it drops that temperature just a little bit. And that's why I turned my temperature up. Okay. And as soon as it starts getting really bubbly, then I can turn my temperature back down a little bit. I'm going to put the thermometer back in. Check that on the side. There you go. And the thermometer is going to flop around a little bit. It depends how good and uh, good you have it. Okay. Just keep on stirring. Sorry if my arm is in the way, but I need to hold my thermometer in place because the look hook on my thermometers wobbles around you know but the biggest thing is keeping your keeping an eye on your temperature you know how you know, good that looks and you'll notice the change when um it gets up to the hard uh candy stage because the consistency of the sauce is you can it just changes right away you can see it you know from where it's at right now you know? and uh, the more times you make any type of candy like this you know you get pretty good at your visual eye of how hot it is you know? like I said just make sure that the ladle that you're using is a wood ladle or a high temp plastic ladle it has to be high temp you know, otherwise it'll literally melt in your in your pan. And then make sure that the pan you're using is a uh, nice thick bottom pan, so nothing burns. Okay, so it cooks it cooks nice and even. Okay, see we're almost at 300. It looks like my thermometer is going to fall in, but it's not. It's actually hooked on just moving side by side. And, uh, as long as I keep everything moving inside the pan and, uh, and it doesn't burn, I'm doing good. But you want to definitely hit that temperature because if you don't hit that temperature when you're, um, when you're done cooking this and you settle it and it cools, it's not going to be as crispy to eat. It's going to be kind of chewy and you don't want it to be chewy. Okay. So we're right at about 300 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to take my thermometer out. Give it a couple more turns. And then when you add the vanilla and you add the uh, baking soda, it kind of flares up a little bit, so you gotta be careful. 
Do that and mix it in really well. That, that was the vanilla. Okay. Now I'm going to add in, shut my heat off. I'm going to add in the baking soda and then stir that in really good. See how fluffy that gets? Okay. okay. And then I'm going to pour this right on the cookie sheet. So I'm going to move fast. So I'm going to pull you over here really fast. Need my cookie sheet. Okay. Get the sink right away. Okay. And then I spread mine out. Some people just leave it like that and it gets really puffy, which is fine. You can do either way. I do this way and it turns out um, totally fine. Totally just wonderful. I don't have any complaints. I don't know. The only thing I have is the complaint is they want more. So, okay. So in your pan, just remember, your pan gets really hot. Okay, this is candy and it gets very, very, very hot. So, get your hot pads ready. Let me get my hot pads ready. And I usually put it in the refrigerator. You know, I have a refrigerator outside in the, in the, um, in the garage. So this one is all ready to go be cooled. I'm gonna pause you for one moment. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are back with peanut brittle. It's actually peanut brittle because the cashew brittle went out in the refrigerator. <laughs> so anyways, I made this one earlier. And like you said, they, I have the nonstick pads and they just pop out, pop out of here and get it started on one side to lift it up. It's like, it's like one big piece of glass almost, you know, and see my pad that I have, you know, it's a nonstick pad. It's so beautiful. These are so wonderful. I use these all the time. Does not stick, does not hurt it. I do cookies, I bake on here, everything. But this is your peanut brittle. Oh, wonderful, that's a huge sheet. That's exactly what that recipe will make. And now you just, I usually take the back side of a butter knife and I just break it up. Into your bite-sized pieces of how you want to serve it. Put it in your little Christmas, Christmas bags for people. They just crack. And this goes a long way. It goes a long way. It's so and it's so easy to make. It's fun to make. It's it's fun to make something and you see the results of this. And um and you did it. Yeah. And you don't have to be a chef, a baker, you know. You can do it with the kids as long as you're safe with the kids. And keep them away from that, that high heat. Yeah, no. And here you have this, look at these beautiful, beautiful big chunks of peanut brittle. And I'm excited for the uh, the cashew brittle. And you can make mixed nut brittle and you know, any kind of brittle. You know, uh, pecan brittle, almond brittle. And you know, so this is, let me turn the camera here my silly hat <laughs> anyways and my scarf representing the Seahawks and the Packers so anyways so you guys that's my peanut brittle recipe um, I hope you try it hope you enjoy it I hope you enjoy my video I enjoy making the videos for you guys God, this hat is just so absolutely great I just love it you know love the Packers love the Seahawks can't decide which one but anyways um, if you have any comments, you have any questions, you know, throw them my way. Um, I think the next thing that I'm going to be making is another fudge recipe. I found this fudge recipe that I really enjoy. I really like, it's really easy. So I'm going to do that next, but I want you guys to have a wonderful holiday. Don't get caught up in all the commercial stuff. 
don't forget the meaning of why we have this holiday. It's all about family and friends. Anyways, enjoy. Enjoy making the peanut brittle. Enjoy giving it away even more. All right. Till next time, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks, everybody.